on December 1st of 2024, coming up, our sun will be conjuncting the fixed star Antares at 10 degrees and 6 minutes of Sagittarius and opposing Aldebaran at 10 degrees and 8 minutes of Gemini. These energies will begin to build around November 29th as the sun moves closer into orb of Antares. Then the sun will conjunct Antares on December 1st and reach exactitude at around 7.30 p.m. Austin, Texas time. After that, the energies will start fading as the sun moves away from the conjunct to Antares. And the energies can still be felt up to around December 3rd um, and on their way out fully by December 4th, which is also called separating. Hey, I'm Kelly, and welcome to this quick overview of the Antares Aldebaran alignment happening this weekend. You don't need to have Antares or Aldebaran alignments in your natal chart to work with this transit, which is also called a Stargate portal. What that simply means is um, in the zodiac, Antares and Aldebaran are at exact opposite degrees in the zodiac wheel, so they sit in opposite parts of the galaxy relevant to our perspective here on Earth. There are many different types of stargates, different types of portals. Um, we're not going to be covering all of that. This is just specific to on the natal chart, on the zodiac wheel, they're at exactly opposite alignments. One's around 10 degrees Gemini and then 10 degrees Sagittarius. So they make a very, very strong aspect. But if you do have natal aspects to either of these starseed lineages, you will likely feel them more strongly in the specific areas, meaning which whichever house uh, they fall into in your chart. For example, I have Antares conjunct my Neptune in the second house in my natal chart. And so I feel these very strongly in my second house energies of not just resources, but like self-worth and my values. So Antares, as I've started discovering more and more with the galactic astrology, I find a direct correlation in my value system to the Antares star system, as well as the opposing Aldebaran. There's a lot of connections through my family to Aldebaran and a couple to Antares. I will be doing another video on that very soon. But for now, here's a quick overview of this transit and the energies that it will be activating or enhancing in your life here in the coming days and weeks. For those of you who do have any alignments in your natal chart to either Antares or Aldebaran, either by conjunction or opposition or square, trine, sextile, things like that, some of the traits associated with these star seeds are going to be spiritual awakening and ascension, transmuters of energy on other planets, strategic thinkers and planners, gateway keepers of higher realms, and activators of higher awareness. Now, whether or not you have any natal alignments to Antares or Aldebaran, the energy that's being activated and available in this transit involves solution-based strategies that are very needed right now, and more specifically, heart-centered solutions, heart-centered decision-making. Whatever your connection or interest in this transit, if you're watching this right now, you're being called to access your highest wisdom at this time and to call others forward into their highest expression. What I mean by this is it's a phrase I started using many years ago, and most of you, if not all of you watching this, are going to be familiar with the term calling people out, calling someone out on their stuff. Well, the higher expression as we evolve and as we grow and do our, our spiritual work and our self-work, there's a difference between calling people out and calling people forward. We can point to a situation and just acknowledge that this is a situation without degrading people or vilifying people or feeding into the drama that seems to be so pervasive now. So you can call people forward by holding higher perspectives of the people you interact with. And people sense this, people feel this, either through your energy or how you're actually communicating with them. Are you being clear with your expectations? Are you being honest and transparent and authentic in your interactions. This is what I mean by calling people forward. 
for any of you watching who do have Antares alignments in your natal chart in any of the aspects mentioned earlier, or if this transit is making any aspects to your natal chart now, some of what you could be picking up on are the freedom seekers, the healers, that aspect of the Antarian beings. Antarian starseeds are highly sensitive, intellectual, empathic, excellent strategists, visionaries, and they help others activate higher wisdom. It is said that they're here to affect the atomic structure of the human body as we shift into a new vibration on this planet, whether that's cosmic rays, light codes, solar flares, all of the different vibrational aspects that are helping us upgrade. Yeehaw! For those of you who have Aldebaran connections in your natal chart, or Aldebaran, depending on how you say it, or if this transit is activating something in your natal chart at this time, you might feel a connection to embody higher consciousness. You might feel that strong pull in the countless situations that you come across every day where you feel met with some of these lower vibrational um, interactions or energies or thinking. Aldebaran starseeds are highly intuitive, spiritual, very empathic and sensitive, and they have a connection with Archangel Michael. So if you feel this strong presence in your life and you do have this contact in your natal chart, then hopefully this is some confirmation for you. It is said that Aldebaran is known as the star of illumination and shines the way to powerful transformation, reflecting the soul's light through the mind. These star seeds are powerful in manifestation and can think logically while tapped into their creative brain to form new and innovative solutions to old problems. This is very needed right now, as you probably already know, as we help to integrate the divine feminine and masculine. It is very needed and helpful for us to demonstrate that logic and intuition can walk side by side, that they are equal partners in your life. So if you feel this contact, if you feel this connection to Aldebaran, then this is a great way to tap into both your left and right sides of your brain. Get creative and logical at the same time. They're not mutually exclusive. Just embody higher consciousness. That is the gift of Aldebaran. Here I'll do a quick run through of the houses. So if you have either Antares or Aldebaran um, connections in your natal chart, this will give you a quick idea of how these energies might manifest for you based on what house these alignments sit in your natal chart. So real quick, first house, you are a catalyst and you embody higher wisdom and awareness that awakens others. Second house, you value integrity and higher spiritual truths for yourself and for those you choose to interact with. Third house, you communicate in more expanded ways sharing broader universal ideals and information. Fourth house, you nurture others by activating their innate gifts and empowering their sovereignty. Fifth house, your inner child is fulfilled by activating others' creative self-expression. Sixth house, you serve others by holding a space of high integrity, which allows deep universal truths to surface. Seventh house, you bring expanded awareness, activation, and liberation into your relationships with others, whether that's personal or business or long-term friendships. Any of those close long-term relationships applies here. Eighth house, you help others heal and transform by sharing the universal nature of abundance and resources. Ninth house, as you explore, learn, and teach, your activated awareness expands and awakens others. Tenth house, you are known for being a catalyst, even if others don't understand how it works. Eleventh house, your ability to hold and express higher truths facilitates growth and healing within groups. And twelfth house, your ability to perceive and catalyze higher perspectives allows you to adjust more rapidly within your own journey. Okay, that was just a super quick overview of this transit. And if you have alignments in your chart, how those might manifest based on which house you have those alignments in.
I'm currently finishing up a separate video that covers the fascinating incarnational cycle of the Antares star beings, um, specifically the, the training cycles. I covered some of this in my interview with Julia Balaz um, after I got certified. And I've been really excited about creating a video, a separate specific video for this topic. So it's it's almost done. So close. That will be out very soon. So check back if you're interested to find out about the Antares training cycles, the multiple consecutive incarnations. Mm. I've also mapped out the major star seed alignments for all of 2025. And we'll be making as many videos as I can keep up with. I'm so excited to build the momentum and to feel the momentum of this year. I'm, I think I'm feeling the Pluto in Aquarius. It's just kicked into some like, whoo, free, freed up energy, clarity, focus. I know some of my clients are finally feeling that. And I hope you are too. So if you're excited about 2025 and just a dose of uh, momentum and energy, check back often so that you can stay up to speed on what's happening with your cosmic lineages. So you know when to tap into the alignments and connect with your specific starseed families. Very excited. If you found value in this video, please hit that like button. And thanks for sticking around. I truly appreciate you. Until the next time.